of that we can always have a plan B. And when we're in business, we always have to have a plan B. We have to <laughs> be ready to improvise, be ready to go. And so today, for whatever reason, our Zoom is not working for our Facebook Live. So we are improvising, but that does not stop this from being a very powerful workshop and connection. I'm super excited today. Um, this is our Trailblazers Master Course, the Business Acceleration uh, Network Master Course, where we get together and we bring um, and feature experts in their industry. And this is really designed to help our, our members, collaborators, and our community um, to utilize these two tools to accelerate their business. Um, today, we have a very special guest, and this is a, a definitely a special skill to be able to create copy that can get attention, that can convert, um, and pieces like that. So in a moment, we are going to be um, hearing about the secrets to instant attention, five insider tips to make your headlines draw in more customers. Um, we have Henry Klauke, who coaches entrepreneurs to capture instant attention online so they can boost their bottom line and ultimately impact our lives, more lives by helping them craft attractive headlines that practically pull clients their way like a magnet. Over Henry's career as a marketing mindset coach. Ooh, I like that. It does take a certain mindset. He's mm -hmm. collected a ton of experience on commanding attention and compiling. It is a cheat sheet. Uh, Okay. Is this where we do a bleep? Um, and we get to be perfectly imperfect. Uh, this he's gonna he's compiled it as a cheat sheet. Right here, cheat sheet. <laughs> Say that five times quickly. The secret <laughs> to instant attention. Um, five insider tips to make headlines, draw more customers. Uh, we are happy that he's teaching that today to the Business Acceleration Network. So we can give him a round of applause. Thank you, Henry. But before he starts, we have a special guest. I've, I've, one of my commitments is if any of our trailblazers show up, we always give them the limelight for, for two reasons. One is so that Henry, you can know who they are. Um, but the other reason is that they are able to um, be showcased in what they're doing and what they're up there up to. So Henry, if you can pause just for a moment while we introduce the famous inspirational speaker, woman on a mission who has um, went from not necessarily wanting to be here to actually thriving and helping others. So Katie Wagner, do you mind sharing real quickly a little bit about um, who you are and what you hope to get out of today? Sure, thank you. Um, well, I inspire people who suffered an unimaginable loss, how to reboot, recharge and reclaim their lives by constructing a new purpose that enables them to live life after loss. Because after, when you've lost something very near and dear to you, it's very hard to get out of that darkness and find a new way to live life after loss. So behind me, you'll see the trilogy I've written. It's a true story of my two sons who were killed in separate homicides two years apart at 18 and 24. And the third book is my story of how I not only survived as Shannon said, but I thrive by helping other people to get out of their darkness and find their new purpose and be able to help other people to get out of their darkness. So it's a whole chain reaction. Thank you for Great. having me. Beautiful. And um, can you share how people might find you or learn more? Um, they can go to my website, goldstarmatrix.com. The one in the middle was serving in the military in the U.S. Navy when he was killed in a homicide during Operation Iraqi Freedom. You go to war and get killed in a homicide. So he made me a Gold Star Mother and I serve as the president of the, my local chapter of the Gold Star Mothers. We help veterans, their families, we volunteer for the community, we raise funds for them. So they can go to goldstarmatrix, all one word, .com and get more information and get the first three chapters of Jeffrey's book for free. Wow, okay. Yeah. Thank you, Katie. And is there anything in particular you were hoping to get out of today other than our goodies that our speakers always give? <laughs> I am looking forward to learning more about the marketing and the secret uh, first sentence that draws people in because you have seven seconds I've learned to get their attention. Maybe that's true, but Henry's going to tell us more. So I'm looking forward to it. Beautiful. Thank you Thank so you. much. Thank you. Um, so with that, Henry, I'm going to turn it over to you. All right. Well, 
great to know a little bit about you, KD. Yeah, I, some inspiring stuff. I definitely want those first three chapters of Jeffrey, no question, as a big reader myself. But you mentioned seven seconds to capture someone's attention. It might be an old statistic. I feel like it's ever shorter, 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 maybe like three seconds now. And that's exactly why I came up with my cheat sheet, <laughs> really pronunciated, the secret to instant attention. And it's the subheadline. You've heard it a couple of times already. The five insider tips to make your headlines draw in more customers. I want before I really dive into this, I want to talk about, and you'll get a copy. That's why I want all listeners to to get their own copy so they can reference it. You know, print it out if they want to. Next time they have to write a headline, it's right there. What is a headline, though? It's a question I get asked very often. It's almost like what isn't a headline is what comes to my mind. I mean, with KD here, every book title you write is essentially a headline. Um, there's the typical ones you think of, an article, a post on social media. Those are headlines. Uh, email subject lines act as a headline. It's the first thing. It's essentially the first thing you see of any sales message. It could be the title of a webinar, a title of a class you're teaching, a title of an online course you have. So really, it's that first touch, those first few seconds of what does someone see? It's usually bigger than everything else at the very top. And I'm going to teach you how to really hone yours in and make them draw in those more customers, more eyeballs, more engagement, whatever metric you're looking at. So let's just go right down the list. I'll make it easy. I'll teach a little deeper so that when you get the copy of your own, some stuff that I say here will spark back into your head. Oh, I, I remember what it's talking about. But number one is obviously capture their interests. Very, very important. You guys, so I say, remember the headline is the first thing they see. Don't bury the lead. If anyone here's in the newspaper industry or business, the lead is essentially the headline, the first piece of the story. And a lot of people bury the lead where they put it way farther down the most important piece the most exciting part of whatever you're sharing just bring it right up front you know i'm just seeing uh yeah don't don't hide that juiciest part of your message down below somewhere and some people like to be more formal of an introduction or perhaps they follow a, a template they picked up along the way but just with this point, the capture their interest, really put yourself in the shoes of your perfect customer, your perfect client. I think what do they care about, right? I'm sure you've seen many, many examples all over the place. Facebook ads is a great place to look where it's the headline is something like free ebook or something. Oh, interesting. My, I'm captured. Let me read on more. Things like that. So the first steps capture your interest. Pretty simple, but not to be forgotten or breezed over. It's it's without the interest, all the rest of these they don't quite matter all that much. Which brings me to point number two on the cheat sheet: strike a balance. So strike a balance. What does that mean? Well, the headline. The purpose of the headline, really, is to get the person reading it to read the first sentence or the very next sentence that you have. That's it. And, of course, the point of that sentence is to get them to read the second sentence and create this, what we call a slippery slope. Uh, because you never, ever want to assume someone's going to read something, especially something that you wrote. Because it becomes our baby. I know Katie understands this. But... It's your job to make it compelling and draw people in. So let's strike a balance is, is you don't want to give too much away in the headline, especially in the, when we're talking about emails an email subject line, because if someone has everything they need from the subject line, they'll never open the email. That's where the magic happens when you send them to more of your content, like maybe another BA club episode for Shannon here something of that nature or even a sales page even better for both parties involved 
the other piece though so this is where the balance comes in is you don't want to make it too too vague that the person has to think scratch their head and say what is actually what is this about you know because that split second is enough to lose them and we're, we're all fighting for attention these days so if you're too vague not specific enough to where you get that interest like number one i talked about but also not giving too much away so it's it's somewhat of somewhat of a pseudoscience and it takes some playing around to do but once you start to get the hang of it and get practice into writing headlines you'll you'll understand that balance of okay is this in that warm zone of of not too much not too little just enough to get someone there it's almost like you want to get someone to pause whatever they're doing just to read that one little headline and then have the headline be exciting enough to read further. So I hope that helps. Uh, okay, so number three here. This might be my personal favorite. Don't get cute. Don't get cute. We all, it's a tendency, myself included, I put this one in for me too, is sometimes there's this idea out there that a marketing message has to be cute, essentially. It has to rhyme or it has to have a cool metaphor in there. And that's all well and good, I would say, later on in whatever message or copy that you're writing. So once you've gotten someone into your world, so to speak, from the headline, then it's okay to bring in some extra fluff, some cutesy ideas but at the headline is the whole point of the headline is to get the reader curious but you don't want to confuse them and a lot of what these cute headlines titles do is say what is he actually talking about and I'll, I'll share a quick story on this one because earlier in my career i had this idea of digital real estate which is like your website, your bio on your LinkedIn, for example, there's all these places that there's digital real estate. And so I was like, well, I could call myself the digital real estate house flipper, you know, where I come in, help people fix whatever copy they already have on their website. And just like a house flipper does, you buy, you buy something, gussy it up a little bit and put it back out to the market. But <laughs> It was too cute. And I would share that message with people that are like, wait, you do real estate? <laughs> no, no. It's just, and as soon as you have to explain it, it's like explaining a joke. If someone doesn't get the joke and you have to explain it, you ruined it. <laughs> that's, that's exactly what you're not supposed to do with headlines. It should be, you can still have some flair without being too uh, tongue in cheek, if you want to call it that. So, you want you want the reader to really connect right away with that headline instead of taking a second to say, wait, what does that mean? How does that apply to me? Which is, of course, what everyone's asking. So don't get cute. <laughs> Try not to. Or if you're going to get cute, wait till later. That's what I'll say. All right. So here later down we have, be careful with tools. Now, this is a really interesting one. When I was writing this cheat sheet a few months ago, uh, I, I, would, I didn't expect this to be on there, but what I learned from speaking to other entrepreneurs, other coaches and consultants, more, more specifically, it's some of the crowd I hang out with, they use what are called these headline analysis tools. I don't know if you've ever heard of them. I see Shannon nodding her head and so is Katie. It's basically like a Google search bar you put in your headline and it'll spit out a numerical grade or like say this is a 80% good headline. And I've had people that I've, I've helped them with their headlines in some of my sales groups and inner circle groups that I'm a part of. I've helped people with their headlines 
And then they've gone and put it into this tool and said, oh, it got a 40%, I can't use it. It's, it's terrible. And so don't get me wrong, these tools are useful, but as more of a starting place, if you're gonna use them at all, I would say use it to start and then hone in on them. Because guess what? These, they have no idea who your target market is. They have no idea what your product or service or what the content is. And it's just limited in a lot of ways. So in terms of using it, if you wanna get a head start and see, okay, am I on the right track? That's a great way to do it. But some people will, are under the impression that unless I get a 70%, I will not use this headline. And I've seen it spit out some stinkers, quite frankly, that, that pass this test. Uh, so be careful, be careful with these tools. And I'm sure there's tons of other ones out there. Uh, I'm just familiar with the headline tools and people seem to treat them as the final say, as like biblical truth almost, but it's really limited. I wanna make sure that's possible because we don't all have a Henry in our pockets to consult when we're writing a headline. So it, it's tempting to go towards these tools, but be careful. And of course, I'm but a man, I'm but a simple man. I know a few things about headlines, but there's one marketer, the best marketer in the world, better than I'll ever be. And that's the actual marketplace. Okay, so that brings me to number five is to test it out. Test it out especially with these analysis tools, with things that you come up with. It's so important to put it out there. See how people react. Uh, and I'll share a quick story. Let's see if I have one handy. Is, uh, this is the second iteration of this cheat sheet. And uh, let's see. Yeah, I have the first one. So my first, first version is called How to Write a Killer Headline. Now, what was wrong with that is who cares? People in my world where in my own head, headlines are so, so important. And that's why I teach on it like in, a, in a class like this. But how to write a killer headline for the average entrepreneur? The, the, where's the value? Where's that capturing the interest, right? Uh, so I actually had to look at my own headline because I was the only, I was the only one who could do it. No one's gonna tell me, you know, the headline guy. Your headline is trash. That had to come from me. And you know, some of it, some of it, if you don't have an expert to go to, it has to come from us as entrepreneurs to really take a step outside of ourselves, put the ego on the shelf, and and take a look. But what's so great is the fact that I made this in the first place and printed it out. Because otherwise, and the way I discovered it is uh, a friend of mine here locally, I gave him a copy and he was saying, oh, it's kind of Orwellian. You know, you got killer and this like blood orange red. You get the eye watching you and stuff. <laughs> no cuteness allowed. Um, and so I thought that was pretty funny. But then I really looked at it. It, it caused me to, to put on his lens, look at this thing and say, is this as effective as I could be? The answer is no. But if this was a Word document sitting on my computer, forever editing and reshaping it, I would have never been able to look at it in that way, have it physically in front of me in order to change it in the first place. So yes, I, I am a testimonial to the tested out version that's the best way to do it is, you know, I, I run across a lot of entrepreneurs who are hesitant to put something out there. Or some people who are perfectionists, like I'm a recovering perfectionist for sure. And things, things stay inside, but there's nothing wrong with putting things out, testing it and reiterating, trying it again. It's, it's really one of the keys of marketing is figuring out because these you know, these five insider tips are all great. You know, I made a, a very generalized version where something can help everybody, but everyone's market, everyone's perfect customer is a little bit different. 
and they're going to react differently to different things. There are some folks who are money oriented, of course. There's some people who are more cause oriented, some folks who are very recognition oriented. So there's different drives for people and that's going to affect your headlines. You know, I, I was teaching a course a couple, maybe last month. And the idea was we made a cheat sheet, me and my business partner on uh, how to make the perfect PB and J. <laughs> it was just for fun as an example of we could, you could write one of these on anything. And I'll get to that in a minute, but the point is, on one of the classes I taught, I made three different headlines for three different generations. I was uh, the baby boomers, the Gen Z, and the Gen, uh, the millennials, yeah. And it was the same content. So it just goes to show that different generations, they look for different things. They have different values, different genders, different values as well, different if you're in a different country, different class of society. Um, different employment status, all these things. I'm not going to go on and on, but that's what's so key about testing it out. Because it's great to start somewhere, studying some old marketing techniques. But then once, once you see how your people react and respond, then you get closer and closer and closer to your, your own voice, your own message. So that's really what I've got here on my secret to instant attention again. I'm sure we'll, we'll get you a copy of this, but I'm complete for now. Shannon, do we have questions or how do things go from here? I'm happy to keep talking as well. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Um, thank you so much. Hi, Scott. Hi, Rosie. We have a lot of people on Facebook. Um, Scott's also one of our, our trailblazers. He is um, also completing a book himself, and, and I know that he'll be excited to um, get your cheat sheet. So how would somebody access, Henry, your, your cheat sheet and, and learning a little bit more? Sure. Well, I, I have this fun URL I bought, henrysheadlines.com. <laughs> Smart. I like henrysheadlines it. Henrysheadlines.com, no apostrophe or anything. Uh, when you go there, you'll get a copy of my cheat sheet. And, and you also beat invited onto my email list, part of my inner circle where, you know, I'm, I'm pumping these things out all the time. This is my flagship. You want to, if you want to call it that cheat sheet, but I made this one a couple of weeks back, the, the covert way to sell or influence anyone, which is all about storytelling and how can you tell stories in business and connect with people on that deep human level. So I'll get a copy of that to people. I'm, it's so new that I haven't, fix my website to include it there, but I'll make sure you get a copy for, for our BA club members. I got a couple other ones in the works about market awareness. It's something I'm teaching on next week here locally is uh, market awareness and market sophistication. So I'll be sure to get those out. If you sign up for my list and get the secret to instant attention, once those are ready, I'll get them out to you. But yeah, market awareness is all about you know, there's, there's all sorts of levels of people out there in the marketplace of prospects, whatever you want to call them, future customers, I like to say. Um, some people know exactly who you are, what you do, and they know that your solution for them is right. That's like the top level awareness. Then all the way at the bottom, people don't even know they have a problem that you solve. Everything in between, they know there's a problem out there. They know there's a solution. They're not sure. So, so really, market awareness is like how do you speak to all those levels? So you capture everyone along there. It's sometimes called the buyer's journey. So I'm I'm really excited about that one. Market sophistication, a little more advanced. It has to do with competition. It's what is your competition saying, and how can you stand above that? And there's these different evolutions of markets. It's really fascinating to me. I, I like to nerd out about it. I'm not sure how it's going to land with some of the folks that are attending this workshop, but we'll see. And I'll make sure that both of those are going to have a cheat sheet. So I'll make sure you get those as well. Okay, beautiful, beautiful. So you mentioned um, when we think of taglines, um, I just I have a couple questions. And K Katie, please, if you have any questions, um, that would be that would be wonderful. Is there 
a limit and um, well, two questions. One is, where do you find people need to be aware of their headlines? Obviously, we know email titles and things like that. Like where, where are they commonly need to use this information? And then is there a length or is there guidelines that you, you know, I didn't, I didn't hear, hey, it only needs to be five words or one sentence or right. um, either one of those. Sure. No, that's a really great question. It's a common one I get as well. That's, that's where things start to break down depending on what exactly it is. So with the email, for example, there's, you get cut off at a certain point. I believe it's something around 60 characters, 60 to 70 characters for Gmail. So you wanna make sure that your most important words are at the front, towards the left, if you wanna call it that, for an email. So that's important. Uh, otherwise, you can get cut off and you know, people might not read it in their inbox, but once they open it, if that first part is juicy enough, to elicit someone to click on it. You can go nuts with the length of it. Um, with a book, for example, right, with KD, a lot of books have a title subtitle. So the, the title itself is like one to three or four words. Really short, punchy, it's the big text. Then when that catches your eye in the bookstore, right, you pick it up and you see those smaller words, a subtitle. And that's really more where the meat is, um, so to speak. So that's a little different. Um, for, for something like a summit or a course, a workshop, an event, they, they all, in my opinion, fall under the same category, headline-wise, at least. And that it's similar to a book. You get the title, subtitles, how I like to do it. Cheat sheets, same thing. I do a subtitle. A title subtitle um, but those you can really have a nice long title and a really nice long subtitle uh, you could really go nuts with it I, I'll bring this up because I, I love this quote I believe is Joe Sugarman one of the one of the most famous ad men of, of his time he said this is if if you're you talking about writing copy like a sales page if it's if your writing sucks, one page is too long. One sentence is too long, right? But if it's good, 10 pages is not enough, right? A big, long headline is not enough. So it's really, um, again, test it out. But that's what I would say. From, from like sales pages, I like these big, long headlines that really draw you in further, further, further. You can like handle objections right there in the subject or the title of the headline. Uh, so there's a lot you can do with it. Some of the ones I've studied, you know, studying old, really successful sales pages have these long titles. People ask me like, how is that successful? It's so long. And say, like, well, it works, you know, you can't argue with that. That's great. Um, so what I'm hearing you say is there's set, there's headlines everywhere. <laughs> like it's in everything we do. It's in events. It's in yeah. blogs. It's in. Um, you know, one of my favorite places to look for headlines and study them is at supermarket, um, where the, like the tabloids, like those people are paid basically to write headlines. Um, gosh, it's like the the. They always talk about like the royal family drama. They, they really drama it up. So I learn a whole lot just from with my cart and I look over. I'm like, wow, that's a good headline. Yep, and How can I use that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's perfect. Um, Katie, did you have any questions for Henry? Uh, yeah, I put it in the chat. I tried to sign up, but it said the subscription failed. So I don't know if I'll get my download or not. Oh, no. Yeah. Well, let's see if I can fix that while we're here, but okay, cool. that should not happen. I was looking forward to it. All Perfect. right. Um, yes. Yeah, and, so and, I, and I understand what he was saying about the book titles, because it, as you right. can see mine, I put a big title on it and then a smaller title, but I've actually shortened the one on Jeffrey because I'm re I have to re uh, publish his book. So I changed that and, um, it, it, it's very important because the same with a book when it's on a, a shelf or in Amazon, you've got like th three seconds or seven seconds, whatever it is, 
for them to look at that cover and decide if they're going to look further. You know, they look at the thumbnail or whatever, and they make a decision right there if they're going to look further. So it's amazing. That's exactly right. And Katie, just just for I'm curious, could you would you mind reading that that sub headlines for your subtitles for your books? Uh, Jeffrey's is just the injustice of murder. It's been changed to he and and then Bud's is a homicide turns a blue star gold because when you're in the military, you're, a, you're I was a blue star mother and when he died, I become a gold star mother and there's a ceremony that takes the blue star to the gold and it's not you don't want to be a gold star mother you want to be a blue star mother because <laughs> your right. kid's still alive at that point. And then on my book, it does, the subtitle's not really on there yet. It just looks like it is, but um, I'm still working on that. It's still in uh, editing and stuff, but that's actually me jumping with the Army Golden Knights uh, elite parachute team. As a Gold Star mother, we got to do that. You have to be invited to jump with them. So we jumped at 14,000 feet. It's called the Leap of Faith. So I haven't quite figured out what mine will be yet, so... And Thank then you on, for sharing. Yeah, and Jeffrey's cover, Ooh. new cover, above his Jeffrey, there's a quote on there from a pretty famous person, which also will get people to pick up the book. Oh, well, he likes this book. I'm going to look at it, you know. So things I'm learning yeah. as I go. I never thought I'd be a, an author, much less a number one best-selling author. So you learn as you go. Every day I learn something new. Like I just learned new stuff from you. So, All right. Yeah. I'm so glad. And it's a perfect example of... of the title, the big title draws you in, you pick up the book. Mm -hmm. uh, I love the um, homicide turns a blue star gold. It's like, oh my gosh, what does that mean? That it's like yeah. so much curiosity. Yeah, As, and it might, you know, if you're not in the military, you even the people in the military don't necessarily know what that means because right. probably eight out of 10 people will know what a gold star mother is, which should be ten, eight, eight out of 10 don't know, eight out of 10 should know what it is. Because these, exactly. these kids died for our freedoms, so. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, great. Hey, Katie, I, I, I popped in and I've toyed around with my, my page a little bit. Uh -huh. If you wouldn't mind trying once Try again, more. Sure. Yeah, I can try. should not have happened. That's, that's the worst timing, too. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. Yeah, it's not a good time. It is all good. Um, so, Henry, what I know that, uh, let's go ahead and share with the viewers um, how to access this again and then I know that you had a special um, gift that you were you were sharing with the with the viewers that's right yes so again henrysheadlines.com it should work now all fingers crossed and you'll get a copy of this but another thing is, is these, these cheat sheets that I've been talking about they've really opened up my business in such a big way where it's like the best way, oh my gosh, I could talk about these forever. It's the best way to distill some of your genius, just a piece of your genius into this one page thing as we talk about attention, right? And a lot of people like to, I don't wanna pick on KD, but she gave away the first three chapters of her book uh, for Jeffrey. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people, what they say is, well, I can't afford it. She said, what do you mean? It's free, I'm giving it away. <laughs> no, I, I can't afford to read three chapters. I mean, that's, that's the sad reality that we live in, but something like this, it's one page, literally you can scan it in 30 seconds and say, oh, I, I know what the, these are almost like mini headlines, if you want to call it that, of each point. Scan it and be like, okay, I could see how that's useful. Go back in, read it, take a couple more minutes to read it. Um, and, and that's what's so powerful and, and giving, giving something away like this on a podcast or at a networking event. So, so powerful. The other part is it's a great way to test, to, to, to test it out. Like I talked about earlier. Uh, if you're thinking of say writing a book before you go through all that trouble, the, the publishers, the editors, and making the manuscripts, testimonials, my gosh, uh, you make one of these and see how it lands with people. No, I'm, I'm, I'm coming from more from the business standpoint of like, what do people want to learn? But before you go through all that trouble, you can see, you know, in an afternoon, how, how it lands with someone. And 
and again, it's an outline for, for speaking. But I just picked this up, talked about it today. You saw it right in front of you. And so I've incorporated this into some of my services. And so I, I help walk my clients through the process of making their own one sheet choose, from choosing the topic to getting their few points down nice succinct way and for viewers of the ba club today i wanted to give a voucher 350 dollar voucher wow for this service of mine now that'll that'll bring us down to around 547 for the total to work with me it'll be a few brainstorming sessions then i'll get to work started on it check in at a midpoint, see how things are going, see if the direction's right or if we need a little bit of tweaking. And then all the way down to the design, making it look snappy and pretty. That's what I'd like to do. So if that's interesting to you, I invite you to email me, henry at henryclauke.com. And I'm sure I'll put that in the chat or somewhere accessible. So and just, oh. oh. Sorry. No, that's all. Yeah, just put BA Club offer in the subject line. That's plenty. I'll know what you're talking about. I'd be happy to work with you. Okay, great. And I, what's, what's coming up for me with this cheat sheet, I know that we shared a little bit, but as you're talking, um, I've actually worked with a six-figure funnel builder. And what was really fascinating is he said that, that a sheet like that um, is essential for funnel conversions because people can actually see maybe where they're missing things, where there's a void. He said that, that it was essential in the funnels to help with conversion because it's a bird's eye view of people being able to see, oh, here are the points of what they're offering and I'm missing this and I'm missing that or I need help with this. And so they can actually self-select um, places where they need help or places that they're, that they're strong and see it at a bird's eye view. So um, that's great. That's one of the things over the years I'm like, how do I, <laughs> cause it, you know, it's like you, you, for me, I have ideas, I have tools, there's things that we can share, but it's, it's getting what's in my head in a quick view for the, for the prospect or the client to be able to understand the journey. Is that, is that kind of resonate in the same thing? Yes, that's a really great picture in, in the business sense of, yeah, it's a perfect start to a funnel. And it's because we're so in our own ways, in our own niches, so brilliant. And it's easy to forget some of these simple things that will help just so, so many people. And I he had really took a lot of, like I said, stepping back, stepping away of like, really people really need to know this? It's so easy. And that's just because I play in that world all the time. But, uh, but that's exactly right. And I got to give a shout out to my good friend, Rook, who he really helped push me into the, the world of cheat sheets. Um, and that's how actually, that's how Shannon and I met as well, which is so cool. So definitely check Rook out. Uh, I think rook.com is, is like the best way to, to get into his, what he's doing. Um, so I, I basically took a more copywriting view on, on the cheat sheet that he teaches, which is a whole nother way. And I came up with my own version. That's what I do for, for my clients now and for myself all the time. Oh, I have roots, cheat sheets. Yes, <laughs> exactly. And, and I have to say, um, this brings in another benefit of what you're, what you're doing is I, I can't throw them away. And they've, I've pulled him out so many times for various things. He comes in and he, when, when at a live event, he gives you a hard copy, kind of like what you had. And it's oh, like, yes. I, it's, it's re rememberable, you know, like it's, it's leaving that, that memory of what's there. And so there's, the, there's a whole other of impact of, um, of using them at, at live events. So. Um, I almost said I have, I have one of the folders next to something in my bed, but I thought that's a little weird. Um, but he's, he's, his cheat sheets are really um, powerful. I remember one of the things that he did was how to use Facebook ads and it kind of mapped out all of the, yeah. Wow. So, 
um anyway sorry you brought him up and i'm like yep he's the, oh. the, the cheat sheets leave a, a remarkable memory so go and download your cheat sheet um you can go to henry's cheat sheets.com is that right or cheat sheet yes. henry henry's headlines henry's headlines sorry henry's headlines.com yeah and i know it's not quite i don't know what in the world is going on but it's not quite working so if if you get a subscription failed for whatever reason just simply send me an email henry at henry com. it's k-l-a-u-k-e and just say cheat sheet in, in the subject line real fast i'll make sure you get a copy of it <laughs> it's i love technology i'll just say that much no, i love it it works for me all the time and we're we're good friends <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. Kathy, any, or Katie, any final questions, comments? Um, no, I'm, I, I think it's really cool. I, I like the idea and I know how important it is to test. I, I listened to Matt Bacon, Bacik, B-A-C-A-K, whatever his last name is. Okay. He's like the king of testing. He does all kinds of email testing and it. so oh, I've yes. learned a lot about that and and, and it's amazing how people, and I do it every day because I get like 2,000 emails a day and I'll read the, the little headline. And if I don't want to look, I just click delete, 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 delete right down the page. So right. th yeah, it, it may only be like four words, you know, and if I don't, if it doesn't grab me, I don't have time to open them all and look at them to see what they're about. So yeah. it's amazing how, how powerful a few words can be yeah so true that's a whole nother training i <laughs> think subject line that i have but it's so true well I'll, I'll just say this quickly is when you're writing the email the subject line is like up on a pedestal you know all by itself pristine yeah. when it's in your person's inbox that you're sending it to it is smushed crushed between like 20 other emails mm -hmm. so it just it's just, you kind of and the thing, that, the thing that irritates me is sometimes that people write the, um, the, like you'll see in your email, it'll say, get it before mothers, dot, 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 dot. And then you yeah. open it and, and you can't read what it actually says. And I'm like, well, then I really get mad and delete them. So, <laughs> and then sometimes it has absolutely nothing to do with the email they wrote. Yeah. Which is another trick because it sucked you in. And then you, you know, so yeah, it's pretty interesting. It's very powerful. Words are very powerful. Absolutely. Yeah. Awesome. I learned there's 200, more than 200,000 behind me up there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> A lot of words up there. Love it, Katie. Well, so great to share the stage with you today. Great yeah, to meet thank you. you. Yeah, wonderful. And so Henry, I also know that you help with email sequences. I know that you can also um, uh, come on as a, as a copywriter. Um, for somebody that may be looking for to give up the copywriting and have them do that for you. Is there anything else that you want people to know before we we say goodbye? I'm set here. I feel I've blabbed enough, but this was so great, Shannon. Yes. Again, I just want to make sure everyone gets their copy. I don't want anyone frustrated. Oh, my subscription failed. You know, that's that's something I'll have to fix. But so it's just Henry at henryclauke.com. Henry is H-E-N-R-Y and then Klauke, K-L-A-U-K-E. And just put, put cheat sheet in the subject line so I'll know what it's about. And I'll send it over to you. I'll even send you this one as a, as a bonus. Beautiful. Right. Thank you. So, Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. All right. Bye for now. <laughs>